What's up guys, Simone Fan 101 and uh, this is going to be another different video that I've been wanting to make for a while. This is the start of my top 10 video game series. Um, these are going to be each, this is going to be one video per series, so we're going to have 10 videos, maybe several depending on how long they are, explaining my love for these series and going more in detail, you know, on past experiences, the games that they've had, the, you know, the level, you know, fun, maybe. Or something like that. You know, just, just going through the motions. So, here we are with number 10. My number 10... My number 10 of the top 10 video game series of all time, for me, as of now, is Jack and Daxter. Now, out of all the series, this is probably going to be the, the one that might throw people off the most. Because... There's a lot of video game series, so people are wondering, why do I choose Jack and Daxter? Well, I, well, a lot, I think it's just for sheer good game, it's got really good gameplay, and it's got interesting characters, interesting villains, um, funny moments here and there. It's unique compared to some other platformers. Then again, most platformers have to be unique, or else we're gonna have... Um, some, you know, some really crappy, boring games. You know, and there have been some great platform, 3D platformers like Mario 64, uh, Crash Bandicoot, um, The Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, and of course, the rival that Jack and Daxter had, have, or had, whatever, whatever you want to say, as Ratchet and Clank. Um, oh, Banjo and Kazooie, of course, um, before that. But why Jack and Daxter? Well, I just, I don't know why. But it's just that when I got my hands on these games, I just got addicted to them. I mean, I played, and for a while, and I play, for a while I couldn't play the others, and I finally did, and they were fun. But I just remember when I was, I think I was in, I, I must have been in either fifth or sixth grade. I got my hands on, oh no, I was even younger than I think it was in fourth grade. I got my hands on a PS2, and about a year later, in fifth grade, I got Jack and Daxter. Um, I and I just was blown away because <laughs> the game was so different. You were basically playing people who looked like elves, which was kind of funny. Um, my little brother always liked it when I died, a little bastard, <laughs> um, because you know the funny animation and crap. Oh, you know when you go down a pit and crap. But the the gameplay was kind of different from other, most most good plat, plat, platformer games games are different from each other but Jack and Daxter was a, a like it really it was really different I mean of course the idea of eco you you know green that fill up your health they quite okay we all know that blue is lightning red is fire and orange you know powers up your punches and everything but there was also other good parts like the like the teasing, you know, romance relationship slash relationship between Jack and uh, Kira, and um, and of course, what many people consider the highlight of the game, Daxter, who is just freak, who is such an asshole that you're wondering why the hell is Jack even friends with this guy, <laughs> let alone best friends. But he's like such an asshole, and then he got gets what he's coming to him, becomes like a little ferret looking thing, and. He's just the highlight of the film because he's the, like Jack doesn't talk in the first game. Daxter is basically his mouthpiece. Jack is kind of like the, the 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 he's like the mind. He doesn't talk. He just moves and does stuff, despite the fact he's the person you're playing as. But it was a lot of fun, and I remember not too long later, a game at a GameStop that happened to be down the street where I live from, um, back in California. I live in Arizona now. Um, I got I recently I got my hands on Jack Two and Jack Three, and again those games were addicting. Now for a while I could not unlike Jack and Daxter I could not beat those games because I was young and I didn't know what to do, or I was just not skilled enough. But of course when I got older I eventually beat them and it was a lot of fun. Um, Jack Two uh, was very fun. You know the idea you could use guns and you're in the future and the twist ending at the end which I will not reveal here. Um, was it was very, it, it was like a really good kind of twist ending. 
it was a lot of fun to kind of figure out when you were throughout the game that you were that you were playing um of course jack talked and he he was he he must have dropped some major balls because he's got a deeper voice than most man the most tough guys i know i mean like not like lawrence fishburne or or uh james Earl jones like or dark like low-pitched black guys <laughs> but he's got a very deep voice so i was like oh shit and of course the of course in Jack 2 and Jack 3 the ability to play as dark jack and light jack the superpowers that they have um Jack 3 a lot of fun as well not too like improved or too many inclusions as as much as Jack 2 did to Jack and Daxter but it was still a fun game um and I I think it was the game I got stuck on the most because you know there were some certain like puzzle things or whatever the hell is going on that I just didn't get um that I eventually got when I got older uh and it was just a lot of fun and for a while those were the only three games I ever played until I grew up I was like in early high school I think it was like a so freshman or a sophomore I eventually borrowed my friend's PSP and I got to play uh Jack um and Daxter The Last Frontier which I don't remember too much of the game because I didn't play on it as much as they did the other three. But I remember it being a very fun game, very addicting. Um, the gameplay was still solid. Daxter was still a piece of shit. What an asshole. Um, another game I remember is it was the weirdest one. It was it was based on something that was like a mini mode in Jack and Jack Three. It was called Jack X. It was basically a racing game. So. When I uh, when I got to play it, um, I was like, wait a minute, this is way different. I think one of the only things that drew me to the game was that the person who instigated the race that I read online, it was Crew, who died in the second game. Uh, I won't reveal how. Um, but it was a very fun game. And what's one thing that I like, loved about all, all, all the games was like, there was this like romance going on between Jack and... And Kira, like, at the end of the first two games, um, like, they, they try to kiss, but then they get interrupted somehow. At the end of the third game, Jack ends up getting kissed by the daughter of Baron Praxis, who is the villain of the second game. It, a little confusion, I know, but, you know, yeah, you gotta play the games in order to figure it out. But still, it's like, th 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 just to let the two come together. It wasn't until Jack, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't until, uh, Jack X... That they finally shared a kiss. I'm like, thank God. It's like, they've been teasing this romance for four games now. Finally hook up already. Daxter was a lot of fun. Oh, and speaking of which, there was one other game. I believe it was for the PSP. And it was Daxter. I played it. But, um... It wasn't as fun as the others. It was definitely... Out of all the games, it was probably my least favorite. Second, maybe only Jack X. But it was still a good game. You were, you were Daxter. I think you played as like an exterminator. <laughs> You play like as like an exterminator or some shit, but um, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And these games were a lot of fun. They, I think, what it was, they were they were so different from the other platformer games. Like the others were different, but this was like out of the norm. It took certain risks. The company that made it was Naughty Dog, which it sounds like a very perverted thing, but trust me, I it's not. At least I hope it's not. <laughs> but. Just, if you can, get your hands on these games. If you have the PlayStation Network for, like, PS4 or something, I think you can get these games. I'm pretty sure. I don't. I haven't checked yet because I don't have PS4. I have, I'd have to look it up online. But these games were just so much fun. They were, a, they were a large part of why I played on the PS2 to begin with. Because they were just so... They were just so good. They were so good at their job. Um, of course, uh, when it compared to, like, other big-time platforming games, like, say, Mario 64, Ratchet and Clank, or even Conker's Bad Fur Day, it doesn't get talked about as much, but it should, because it, they're, they're a really solid, especially the first three games. If you want to play any games first, play the first three, because that is, like, a story that's solid from beginning to end. Um, very little, you know, missing details. Uh, a lot of fun characters, like uh, King Samos in the Desert from the third one. 
the asshole Baron Praxis, who's the villain in the second one. Um, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't King Samos. It was King Deimos in the third one. Because Samos is the sage of Sandover Village. And, um... Yeah, he's the sage of Sandover Village. And he's, like, the... Basically the mentor of Jack and Daxter throughout... In the first game. But he's also kind of a prick, too. Like, think of Master Roshi, except Master Roshi is not perverted. And actually takes things seriously. And would probably kick your ass to boot. Uh, the, of course, there were other gameplay, you know, mechanics. Like in the first game, you got to you got to collect a bunch of precursor eggs, which in the second and third games, as I will not reveal, there they got they became pretty rare. Um, the enemies in the games, there's you know the little your little monster goons in the first game. Then there was you know your creatures in the second and third game that were very similar. I forget. I honestly forget their names, but. Yeah, if you can't just get these games, like the and of course, oh the music. What can I? The music was pretty good. It wasn't like great music, but it was good enough to set the mood for all three games that were needed. Uh, the music, the graphics were pretty good. Of course, got better as the games went on. Um, the voice acting was actually pretty good because most scenes contain voice acting. In fact, I don't think there's a single scene where you have to read text. Unless it's like tutorials and shit. No, they, you, actually, maybe, no, it's not even tutorials. It's like, I think like a little machine pops up and it like talks to you or something. And that's how you do your tutorial. Um, but it was just a lot of fun. Um, the cutscenes are very enjoyable. Just, if you can, get these games. The gameplay is also very solid. But seriously, get these games. You will not regret it. And uh, this is only number 10 on my top 10 video game series of all time. Next time, you will see number 9. And these series, you will have a better understanding of these games. Because most likely, you've probably heard or played of them. Until then, see you next time, guys.